Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. We're here today at the ARM TechCon 2015 in California, and I've got with me Mark Dickinson from ARM. Hello, Mark. Nice to have you here. Hello. Hi. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what role you have at ARM. Okay, so um, I'm general manager of the Media Processing Group. Um, that's the group at ARM responsible for the development of the, um, the, the graphics processors, video display processors, everything that's in the, in the media pipeline in a... In, in the main markets we're targeting are, are mobile, but our, our products go into a quite a wide range of markets, uh, mobile being the dominant one. Now, obviously, video is a, a big part of the mobile experience from the UI all the way through to gaming. So, in fact, it, it's a big part of the silicon as well, isn't it? On top of on the system on a chip, the GPU is quite a big part. Uh, absolutely. The, the, uh, and, and again, it depends on the e exact configuration, but typically the, the GPU could take up to about 25% of the silicon area. So people have to think very carefully about making their choices on, on, on the whole of the GPU and, and the graphics pro sub subsystem, if you like, and making sure that that is you know, uh, efficient from an area point of view and, and, and power efficient, really, uh, because it does you know, take up quite a lot of the silicon real estate. And you talked about power. Obviously, when we play games, we can feel the back of our phones heating up a little bit with that yeah. 3D graphics. And of course, ARM's aim is to keep that power consumption as low as possible. Exactly, and another way it depends on the range again. But if you look at the at the high end, it's 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 more of a how much can I do for the maximum power I can afford within the the power envelope. We we, we continue to strive for more and more capability. So if we just reduce the power, people are going to put more in. Um, so really, the way you look at it is is we've got this ceiling we mustn't go past, and what can we do within that ceiling? Um, and that ceiling is determined by I would like to be able to play a game for a few hours without having to have my phone you know plugged in. Now, there's also been some new announcements from ARM recently, the Mali 470 GPU. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that, please? Yes. Um, so one of the areas that's interesting in, in graphics is, is this migration to small form factors, things like wearable devices, uh, where we want something which is very reactive and, and got the sort of UI that you're, you're used to on a smartphone, but is in a different, you know, in a wearable form factor or a different form factor. In fact, we've become so accustomed to smartphones that... That we, that we really demand that sort of high quality of, of user experience or interaction, even if it's something relatively modest. Um, and and the, the 470 is designed exactly for that. It's designed to be very small and very extremely power efficient. It's 50% less power consumption than anything we've done before. So a really big step in terms of power efficiency. Um, and, it, and it's designed to be um, supporting the types of applications that you would see for a, for a smartwatch, for example. Um, and, and really you can look at it in two ways. There's two modes, if you like, predominantly. One is an ambient mode where you just want it to tell the time and it's updating relatively modestly. You want it to absolutely consume as little as possible. And then as soon as you're reacting, in interacting with it, you want it to be just as reactive as your smartphone. So then you've got to be, you know, you've got to have a, a reasonable graphics performance then to be able to support a, a very good interactive display. Um, so that's really where we're targeting. We see, we see wearables as one area. We see also a lot of potentially new areas in sort of the whole of the IoT area where there will be um, things that we that didn't used to have displays before that will now start having displays, whether it be a, you know, a desk phone, for example, a printer, uh, you know, lots of areas where you would want a display that you didn't have one before. You want that good graphics experience. So the 470 was designed specifically for this low-end IoT and entry smartphone market? Exactly. For uh, The primary, primary focus is on power um, and and secondary focus on, on area because it's also a, um, a high volume market therefore very very cost sensitive so those are the two sort of main criteria. Excellent at the other end of the market we've got new GPUs coming down the line I know you can't talk much about those but what are some of the factors that are driving the GPU market forward? So yeah the, the, one of the things that we see in the industry um, is that um, we sort of in some senses saturated on the on the number of pixels if you like on a, on a screen um, we don't need tablets with any more resolution or smartphones with any more resolution because we typically can't see it. I'll come back to that in a second because that's not quite true. But um, So what we're seeing is a, a much greater emphasis on the complexity that we can support. In other words, the, the fineness of the geometry or the, or the behavior of the interaction of the graphics within um, a scene. A good example of that would be something like smoke which you know is sort of in on one hand quite trivial but actually making that realistic in a physics type of way takes a huge amount of computational power and and so the focus if you like is on what i would sort of call quality not quantity in terms of the pixels uh, that we're pr providing 
But, but let me step back a bit as well, because there is one thing that's driving um, the pixel density as well, which is actually virtual reality. Um, and there, you put huge demands on virtual on, on the resolution because now you've got to have two images, not one, um, and you've got to update them at approximately twice the rate that you would do in the best for the best possible smartphone. So 120 FPS is sort of what you need to give your give um, a, a, a low latency experience, if you like. And and if you see juddering or if you see latency in, in VR, it does have some rather un unpleasant side effects on you. So VR is driving, I wouldn't say it's the, you know, the, the dominant feature yet, and, and I think there's still a question mark exactly where it will it'll pan out. But it is, it is something that we're working very hard on to make sure that our future high-end GPUs support that use case um, you know, very well. And of course, the Gear VR from Samsung, of course, uses the Samsung phones. They've all got Mali GPUs in them, so that's you're actually on the leading edge of, of that in terms of consumer products as well. I'm very glad you brought that up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, um, yeah, no, we, so we've been working very closely with Samsung, with Oculus, to, to, to try and make sure that we... Um, so, so they've been working with silicon that exists, of course, because so that's in the phones today, but we've also been working very hard on the software to, to do some things which are not should we say, the first thing that you would think of in the normal graphics case. Uh, latency, I mentioned, is one of the areas where you've really got to get that latency down to the minimum for, for VR. In a game, it's less important. Um, and you can tolerate a little bit more latency. So you have, typically in graphics, you'd have quite a deep pipeline of things going on. It, you've really got to work hard on that with VR to, to, to shorten that pipeline to give you a, a very reactive because when you pan your head like this you know you want the world to move with you you don't want it to move slightly later um, and that drives a lot of the uh, so we've done a lot of work if you like on the software side as well to, to improve the to optimize the VR um, use case. So that just shows that, of course that ultimately the end experience is always hardware and software combined together and ARM does, does both of course. Exactly and, and it's interesting I mean just in terms of the you know the group that I run half of the people in it are software engineers so it's uh, it's there's a lot of software to, to to support as well yeah absolutely. That's great Mark thanks very much well I'm Gary Sims here from ARM TechCon we're speaking to Mark Dickinson from ARM thank you very much.